The learning objective of this chapter is to become familiar with the consignment procedures associated with the transport of dangerous goods by sea, including the identification of dangerous goods, marking, labels, placards, documentation, electronic data processing and interchange, Consignment procedures involve the shipping paperwork, labelling and placarding of a shipment of cargo. Except in special circumstances identified in the code, dangerous goods cannot be transported unless those goods are properly marked, labelled, placarded, described and certified on the shipping papers as required by the IMDG code. The term marking refers to the identification of the substance contained in the package while labelling and placarding identify the risks and hazards presented by those substances, placards being larger signs for cargo transport units and labels being for smaller packaging. For the purposes of the code, there are a number of definitions with which you should be familiar. Click on the buttons for more information. Consignee means any person, organization or government that is legally entitled to take delivery of a consignment. Shipper means any person legally entitled to act as a consigner, that is, a person who prepares a shipment for transport. Consignment means any package or packages or loads of dangerous goods presented by a consigner for transport. Let us also remind ourselves of some other definitions. Click on the buttons for more information. The UN number is the unique identifying number assigned to a dangerous substance, material or article. It is made up of four digits. The proper shipping name is the name of a dangerous substance, material or article to be used in any documentation relating to transportation, such as on forms, labels and placards. The purpose of indicating the proper shipping name and UN number of a substance, material or article is to ensure that it can be readily identified during transport. This is particularly important in the case of an accident, in order to determine the emergency procedures necessary to deal properly with the situation and, in the case of pollution, for the master to be able to comply with reporting requirements. An overpack is an enclosure used by a single consigner to contain one or more packages and forming a single unit for the convenience of handling and stowage. This may include packages loaded onto a pallet and those contained in a box or crate. Where a number of packages are transported in an overpack or packing unit, the proper shipping name and the UN number for each item of dangerous goods it contains must be marked on the overpack or packing unit unless markings or labels representative of all the dangerous goods are visible. An overpack must also bear the mark Overpack. The individual packages shall also be marked in accordance with the requirements of the code. Other than for Class 7, a packaging including an IPC which previously contained dangerous goods shall be identified, marked, labelled and placarded as required for those dangerous goods, unless steps such as cleaning, purging of vapours or refilling with a non-hazardous substance are taken to neutralise any hazard. Packagings including tanks and IBCs used for the transport of radioactive material shall not be used for the transport of other goods unless they have been appropriately decontaminated. Empty cargo transport units still containing residues of dangerous goods or loaded with empty, uncleaned packages 
shall comply with the provisions applicable to the goods last contained in those containers. In practice, for example, an empty helium gas cylinder marked with the danger symbol compressed gas shall still be handled as it is full. When two or more dangerous goods are packed within the same outer packaging, the package shall be labelled and marked as required for each substance. Special packaging provisions apply for goods of Class 7, radioactive material. Unless otherwise provided for by the code, all packages shall display the proper shipping name and the UN number of the contents, preceded by the letters UN. In the case of unpackaged articles, the marking shall be displayed on the article itself. As such, a typical example of such a mark is All package markings shall be readily visible and legible. such that information will still be identifiable on packagings surviving at least three months immersion in seawater, displayed on a background of a contrasting colour, and shall not be located with other package markings that could substantially reduce their effectiveness. The proper shipping name of the contents shall be marked on at least both sides of tank transport units containing dangerous goods bulk containers containing dangerous goods, and any other cargo transport units containing packaged dangerous goods of a single commodity, for which no other mark is required. Except for goods of Class 1 explosives, the UN number shall be displayed in black digits, either against a white background in the lower half of the placard, or on an orange rectangular panel immediately adjacent to the placard or marine pollution mark. Click on the button to see examples of the way in which the UN number shall be displayed. Certain special types of packaging are required to comply with special marking provisions. Similarly, the special characteristics of certain contents will also require that special markings are displayed. Click on the buttons for more information. Salvage packagings must be marked with the word salvage. IBCs of more than 450 litres shall be marked on two opposing sides. Special marking provisions apply for packaging containing Class 7 radioactive material. The ID mark of the consigner and or consignee must appear as must the packaging type and the special symbol used for all packages containing radioactive material. Packaging containing marine pollutants shall be durably marked with the marine pollutant mark adjacent to the dangerous goods label, except for packages containing only small amounts. This mark is only required where the transport temperature is very high and will therefore only appear on a thermal tank or special cargo transport unit. This refers to cargo transport units that have been fumigated. Such a unit will be marked with a warning sign as shown, and located where it will easily be seen by persons who might attempt to enter the interior of the unit. The sign will remain in place until the unit has been ventilated and the dangerous goods have been unloaded.
For dangerous goods shipped in a cargo transport unit in only limited quantities, the unit need not be marked with the proper shipping name or the UN number of the contents. Instead, the words "limited quantities" or the abbreviated form "LTD QTY" shall be shown. For dangerous goods shipped in accepted quantities, the outer packagings shall bear a special "accepted quantities" mark. The primary hazard and the name of the consigner or consignee shall be included in the mark if not shown elsewhere on the package. Combination packagings having inner packagings containing liquid, dangerous goods. Single packagings with vents and receptacles for transporting liquefied gases shall be marked with orientation arrows on two opposite sides. The provisions described in the code relate essentially to danger or hazard labels. Additional labels indicating the precautions to be taken in handling and storage of the package, such as a "this way up" sign. Or an umbrella symbol to indicate that the package must be kept dry may also be displayed. Labels identifying primary and subsidiary risks are based on a series of model layouts, numbered one to nine, corresponding to the class and division of the dangerous goods as identified in the dangerous goods list. Certain packages containing dangerous goods of a low degree of danger may be exempt from these labeling requirements. In such cases, a special provision indicating that no hazard label is required will appear in the dangerous goods list. Special labeling provisions apply to class two gases, self-reactive substances, organic peroxides, infectious substances, and radioactive material. They are listed in the code. Many goods have additional dangerous properties, and where necessary. These are indicated by adding labels corresponding to the subsidiary risks. Click on the button to see an example of subsidiary risk labels. The labels for packages shall conform in terms of colors, symbols, numbers, and general format as described in the code. They shall be in a diamond shape and divided into two halves: the upper containing the symbol, and the lower text and the class and division numbers. Additional text may appear underneath the symbols. But with the exception of Class Seven materials, where extra features are listed, it shall be limited to describing the nature of the risk and handling precautions. The method of affixing the label or labels on packages containing dangerous goods shall be such that the labels or stencils will survive at least three months immersion in sea water. We will now look at the different labels in detail. Click on the classes for more information. Placards are large labels that are fixed to the outside surfaces of cargo transport units to provide a warning that the contents of the unit are dangerous goods and present risks. They shall be fixed as follows: on a freight container, semi-trailer, or portable tank, 
one placard shall be placed on each end and one on each side. On a railway wagon, one placard shall be placed on at least each side. On a multiple compartment tank containing more than one dangerous substance, placards shall be placed along each side at the positions of the relevant compartments. On all other cargo transport units, a placard shall be placed on at least both sides and on the back of the unit. Placards shall conform to the equivalent labels for the class and division with respect to the color and symbol. They shall therefore be in a diamond shape, but larger than the labels. They are similarly divided into two halves, the upper again containing the symbol, and the lower the class and division numbers. The method of fixing the placard on cargo transport units containing dangerous goods shall be such that the information shall still be identifiable after at least three months' immersion in seawater. Special provisions again apply for Class 7 goods. All placards, orange panels, marks and signs shall be removed from cargo transport units or masked as soon as the dangerous goods or their residues are discharged. In a similar way that documentation is required and prepared for other goods transported by sea, dangerous goods also need to be properly documented. With dangerous goods, a particular requirement is that the basic information relative to the hazards presented by the goods is fully presented and readily available. Except where the code specifically provides, it is the responsibility of the consigner, that is, the shipper, to complete the documents and provide the information required by the code. In practice, each ship carrying dangerous goods or marine pollutants has a special list or manifest providing full details of the goods being carried and indicating their location in the ship. Alternatively, a detailed stowage plan may be acceptable instead of a manifest. A copy of the document shall be made available before departure to the person or organization designated by the Port State Authority. Click on the button below to see an example of a dangerous goods form. This list or manifest should be based on the dangerous goods list and related areas of the IMDG code and shall include the following description for each dangerous substance, material or article. The UN number preceded by the letters UN. The proper shipping name. The primary hazard class or, where assigned, the division of the goods. Subsidiary hazard classes or divisions. Where assigned, the packing group number which may be preceded by the letters PG, and the total quantity of each item of dangerous goods. The proper shipping name shall be supplemented by additional information, showing the following information. Technical names for NOS and other generic descriptions. Empty, uncleaned packagings, bulk containers and tanks, but which contain residues from dangerous goods previously carried, shall be described as empty, uncleaned, or similar. Waste material being transported for processing or disposal shall be described by the term waste. Elevated temperature substances shall have the word hot or similar in front of the proper shipping name. Marine pollutants shall be identified by the words marine pollutants in the documents and where applicable, where the cargo has a low flash point of 60 degrees Celsius or below, the minimum flash point shall be indicated. For limited quantities, the words limited quantity, or the abbreviation LTD, QTY, shall be included. For dangerous goods transported in salvage packaging, an estimate of the quantity shall be given, and the words salvage packaging shall be included. And, for infectious substances, contact details of the responsible person shall be shown. More detailed information is also required for certain specialized substances.
Where dangerous goods have been packed or loaded into a container or vehicle, those responsible for that operation shall provide a container vehicle packing certificate, detailing certain information and confirming that applicable conditions have been met. This information may be incorporated in the dangerous goods transport document, but if a separate certificate is provided, then the two documents must be attached to one another. For consignments of dangerous goods, the appropriate emergency information shall be available at all times. It shall be kept in a place separate from the goods themselves and immediately accessible in the event of an incident. The master and chief officer will normally keep this information. Today, much of the paperwork is done by computer and data is exchanged between shippers and receivers by email.